So, anime OPs. I skip them sometimes. I know, I know it's really brave of me, honestly, to come out and say such a heinous statement, but it, it's true. While I'm on this hot takes train, I might as well come out and say that I'm not the biggest fan of murder. I tried it once or twice, but I just couldn't get into it. While I may be far from the type to never skip, there's definitely something special about a good or iconic opening. The way it sets the tone, preps your emotions, and how it can come to almost embody the show in itself. Fortunately for me, I've been diagnosed with a rare condition called being picky, so finding the ones that execute everything perfectly is a delightful but rare occasion. So in search of that white whale, let's take a quick discerning eye to the latest season of this bizarre thing people call anime, featuring me, a bizarre thing people call cool. Please subscribe. It's a resident meme girl of the season, primed to be used, abused, and forgotten about in about three months. Well, I've actually seen her floating around for a while, so she might have some staying power. I like this part where she punches the camera. It's pretty cute. The OP does just kind of sound like every other song in the genre I refer to as anime girl singing, except this time it doesn't have any brass, which is a huge negative. There's some touches of interest, the faster rap-like part or this loungy character with the piano, which I would probably like if they made for the whole song, though I don't think Yui Ogura's cutesy, nasally delivery works the best for each, but ultimately they make up only a pretty brief aside before going into the well-worn chorus. It's got a couple moments, but I couldn't imagine myself ever wanting to put this on again, and it doesn't lean heavily enough into any particular element of itself to have that mimetic potential that locked other OPs of the style into the public consciousness. Congratulations, Jahi-sama. I find you inoffensive and unremarkable. That's not gonna last long, though, because I will have forgotten all of this in about one week. Also, if you want to see me and Jack check out the first episode, head on over over here uh, to go, go watch that Af after this video, please. <laughs> Battle game in five seconds. I've heard the fight scenes really drag. Five, four, three, two. I at first thought the shitty sounding audio at the beginning was from me watching a low quality re-upload on YouTube, but no, that's just how it sounds. We then get 15 seconds of slow panning and music as they introduce the title card. Not only is this somehow hideously gaudy and terribly uninteresting, it's literally just this over a white background for 15 seconds. Isn't this an action show or something? Oh right, they've only got five seconds of it. So that makes sense, they've gotta stretch things out somehow. The huge red five is off center even though it feels like it's supposed to be the focal point. Batoru is in white over a white background with this disgusting drop shadow and behind it is the shadow effect but the shadow doesn't correlate to the shadow on the text above it and this makes my brain hurt. The music is the only saving grace here though that's far from high praise. Besides some questionable mixing on the vocals, it's inoffensive but forgettable. There is one part that I think is pretty compelling where the tone shifts in a cool way, changing the beat emphasis to be half the pace of earlier, but then it just kinda ends right after. That would've made for a much better pre-chorus than the one it does have, which feels like it can't decide where it's going and why the fuck am I spending so long talking about this show? Oh, uh, goodbye. This song suffers from the plague that I find in so many half-decent J-pop anime songs. They set up a fun melodic and rhythmic combination for the verse, have some interesting contrasts in the pre-chorus, and then the chorus decides to completely abandon everything that made it good. Upbeat and poppy with a nice dash of syncopation and punctuated vocals trading off turns into them all singing together with a huge loss of momentum and completely different color to the sound. I get the idea of getting bigger for the climactic moment, but the only way this actually gets bigger is in stereo space. It doesn't build on the energy from before. There needs to be some escalation into the climax. You can't ride the edge like this without bringing things to completion. It teases at greater potential, but ultimately stops short. While it's hard to accept, it didn't come to be as good as it could have been. The animation is good, and the show definitely has my interest for a variety of reasons such as tits and- but I thought it was a strong example of something I hear a lot in these kinds of OPs that annoys me. Ah, it's the slimy Sakai. No, no, not not that slimy Sakai. The, the other one. On the list of things I usually expect from anime, good English isn't particularly high. Apparently, this opening is sung by Minda Rin, a pretty big YouTuber who primarily does anime song covers. Hey, hey, wanna wanna collab? 
Wanna collab? Sub for sub? <laughs> so not only does she seem to be competent in three languages, English, Japanese, and Thai, she also went from singing covers to being the singer that is covered. I mean, the OP itself does nothing for me. If you close your eyes and vaguely pictured the concept of an anime OP, then you've basically already seen this one. But seeing people go from fan creators to actually having a role in the industry is something I'll always find cool. Maybe I too will live my dream of being underpaid and overworked by putting anime ta in my Twitter bio. The anime's voice actor singing the OP is something that I love in theory, but that in most cases ends up being painfully mediocre. Like, literal, physical pain I feel when it happens. Physical pain in, like, my, like, my, my ear. Hey, let's give an inexperienced vocalist a bland melody, fill it with layered tracks, and slather it in so much pitch correction you can't even tell who it is anymore. You know, entirely defeating the point of having the character sing the song in the first place. Fortunately, this song doesn't fall into that category at all. <laughs> Romance shows in particular I think stand to benefit the most from their voice actors singing them, since it can be a really effective and compelling representation of their relationship as a whole. This OP does it well. Each character gets plenty of time to stand on their own and together, creating the sense of two distinct but clearly connected individuals. The visuals are colorful and fun, plenty of simple but effective touches like the fact that the girl literally brings color into his life. In those 90 seconds it communicates the general central dynamic and overall tone of the show. It might not change the course of history, or you know, it, it might, but I think this one's pretty alright. I feel like I'm listening to the Nightcore version. It's just another Isekai man, like I don't know why you're in such a hurry. Hold on, let me take a question from the viewer. Um, let's see here. But what about the bad visuals? Yes. The track for this one is Red Cigarette by The Oral Cigarettes. The Oral Cigarettes. A little bit weird that they need to specify. I mean, how else would you smoke them? Actually, forget I asked. The music is okay, I guess, though I feel like a lot of tracks in this style in particular tend to blend together for me, but oh man, if you like the colors black and red and really hate the colors not black and red, then boy howdy do I have the OP for you. That's about all I've got to say though. The number of emotions this OP made me feel is about as diverse as its range of color. The OP says forget me not, but I already forgot it. And everything else. I am not a fan of the way the vocals are done in this. It's got that auto-tune effect, but also sounds over-compressed and like it was being belted too hard. So it ends up being sharp and uncomfortable, rather than floating over top of the pretty simple instrumental, which is what it feels more like it was going for. If the song is going to be simple, then that means the little things matter all the more. Also, the visuals are... Well, just look at the quality of those particle effects. Those would look more at home in In Search of Axis from 1989. Now there's a reference for you. That's uh, that's the first official Polygon Pictures project, if you, if you didn't know. Now, now you do. So this OP brilliantly sets the scale for the series, this powerful military march set against striking, lavishly crafted imagery. It's unapologetic in its bombast and all the better for it, giving a great sense for the weight of this battle and... Oh, this is the wrong Get a Robo? I mean, I thought it was a bit weird that it was in 4x3 and was a good looking modern mecha anime that isn't Gundam, but hey, if they intentionally downscaled Megalobox, then I figured anything's possible. Get a Robo arc, that's the real deal. Let's give it a look. Okay, I don't know much about Get a Robo, besides thinking it looks cool and that I do want to give the franchise a shot at some point, but if you're a big fan of it, then I am so, so sorry. This opening follows two lover... 
to friends spending the day together. Functioning almost as a mini slice of life episode, it covers the whole day from morning to night. It even opens and closes with the same shot of the sky sleeping. The consolidated episode format is cool, it sort of reminds me of how the opening for Kaguya Season 2 feels like a shortened gag that would just normally be in an episode, but I do find myself wishing there was at least a little bit more abstraction. OPs are one of the biggest opportunities to play around with less literal visuals, so when it is this literal, well, I just find it gets a bit boring after watching it enough times over. This hit home for me even harder when I watched the first episode and saw this awesome art style they use for the establishing monologue. I would have loved to see some of that here. I can definitely jam out to the music though, I like the chop piano sound a lot, and the fusion of older and newer sounds is something I almost always find appealing to some extent. The way the vocals are mixed, the choppy piano and digital drums set against the double bass, strings, and accordion makes for a fun combination of timbres. I do wish the accordion was a little louder, it tends to get drowned out, and I think it plays a pretty important role. Also, this is 19th century Paris, so where is everyone? Was there some rapture I missed the memo on? Look, I can believe they've got giant flying buildings, vampires, and magic books, but Paris being clean? That's where I draw the line. <laughs> ah, the light, the light, why is it, why are the lighting effects, why are they so bright? There's something about this OP that feels like an ad jingle. Maybe it's the short solo alternating with the over-the-top choir. I can't stop thinking of that J.G. Wentworth commercial when I hear it. Call J.G. Wentworth, 877 Cashmore. Sorry if I got that stuck in your head again. I have an annuity, but I need cash now. Call J.G. Wentworth, 877 Cashmore. Okay, maybe I'm not actually that sorry. This opening is simply too much for me. I feel like my eardrum is being drummed. It's so punchy, loud, gaudy, over the top, repetitive. It's just annoying. Describing this is like trying to swat a fly. Like, listen to how loud and abrupt this line comes in with no transition. Or this blindingly hideous rainbow flash. They could have at least used the bisexual flag colors. God knows no one else is. The cheapy main character jamming out is pretty cute, but that's a minor saving grace among many major headaches. I will give credit to Donut number 13 here though, his performance was impeccable, really sold the character. <laughs> Kirito, it's time to get a haircut. Like, have you ever heard of a comb? That's no excuse not to look your best. Have some self-respect. And he hates cherry blossoms too. Like, who hates cherry blossoms? I'll have you know that I do not associate with opening themes containing cherry blossom hating unkempt hair Kirito and that have the name Seirei Gensoku. Higurashi Sotsu, the sequel to the not reboot from last year. I like how the flashes of scratches or pencil scribbles or whatever are actually set in time with the music consistently through the whole thing. Heck, even her little stumble here syncs up. If we ignore this, then I'd say it's pretty alright. The CG stuff isn't great, this shot kinda drags, but there's a good variety in color, imagery, and pace of the visuals without it just feeling random. The music also captures that gothic tone but never gets bogged down by it, and acquires this feeling of progression through how the music builds upon and reiterates this central motif established in the opening. Like, the beginning of the opening is, is what I mean. My favorite shot is this one with Satoko and that girl who says the n-word. <laughs> Showing them young and less young contrasted against this red eye stuff, I don't know, I never made it past the first episode. Even if their blank face stare into the camera is a little goofy looking, but I don't think there's ever been a point in time that Higurashi hasn't been at least a little goofy looking. I still tremble at the memory of those powerful, powerful hands. They said the title of the show in the anime! Holy shit! Uh, the animation's alright, I guess, and what? She just disappeared. Like I was saying, the animation is pretty solid and the music is forgettable, but I can't get over how boring all these character designs are. I feel like I'm losing personality just looking at them. And even if I did say I like abstraction, I usually like it when it means 
something at all. Not sure what I'm supposed to interpret from him running through the sky and falling into a glass of Fanta. I can't help but see a million of those After Effects VTuber transitions that are all flashy enough to be impressive but are ultimately just vaguely aesthetically pleasing random shapes. It barely gives you any sliver of personality for the characters throughout the whole thing and, spoilers, I watched it, and I can at least compliment the OP for being accurate. Man, VTubers really are taking over anime, huh? This OP is sung by Higuchi Kaide of Niji Sanji. The detective is already dead, apparently has a cameo from Hololive's Fubuki and Matsuri, as well as having Nanakagura sing the ED, and a group made up of Aqua, Nene, and Tsuburu sing the ED for the long-anticipated Jahisama. And as someone who long ago swore my soul to the digital world, I welcome it with open arms. I don't really keep up with actual celebrities or pay much mind to what's popular in the world of music, so these examples are some of the rare times the announcements actually perk up my ears and make me shout, well, that's neat I guess. Huh? What about the OP? What about the OP? Oh right, the OP! It sucks. My friend Jack called this Splatoon music, and I've never been able to hear it the same way since. When I first heard this, I thought it sounded strangely familiar, and it's actually by the band Necry Tonki, who I got into a few months back off of a random YouTube recommendation and immediately fell in love with for their goofy style. They've got an infectiously good energy. As far as their music goes, this track is a lot more low-key than most, but I actually like that. It reminds me a bit of Sotaisei Dinan, but it's still got Nekrai Talki's distinctly charismatic sensibilities. And while I might have expected something more upbeat, the comical character to the music no doubt fits the visuals and show quite aptly. And I kind of appreciate the contrast and pace considering how over-the-top the series itself is. The visuals have pastels and triangles galore. Get it? Because love triangle? Do you get it? Yeah, it may be a bit on the nose, but hey, it works, and I think having them wander through the triangles like they're an MC Escher drawing is a pretty interesting way of visualizing things, and fits right in with the absurdity of the show's premise. It spotlights all the characters and their personalities in a fun and interesting way, and sure it's not gonna do the whole flying through the characters thing as well as QAnny, but you can also say that about doing almost anything when it comes to animation compared to QAnny. It crafts some funny, memorable imagery with an absolute jam beside it, I'd say that's a job well done. Congratulations Kanjo Mo Kanjo, and a relevant YouTuber liked your OP. Don't spend all that praise in one place, you hear? Good lord, those clothes are tighter than my pants after seeing her, is what I would say if she wasn't ugly. Like this OP. That, that's legitimately all I've got. This is the kind of OP that's not necessarily all that different from other OPs I've seen, but that I can very easily imagine I would come to love if I really enjoyed the show. There's this nostalgic feeling to it that I can already picture immediately welling up all the potential emotions that the show would give me. It's got an extremely specific but hard to pinpoint vibe to it, those quintessential coming of age stories with the song that's upbeat but not too upbeat, the charming soft voice singer, the slice of life shots followed by emotional distance gazing, and the character running or flying through an abstract landscape in the climax. It hits every note, but hits them well and panders to a specific type of OP for a specific type of show I tend to have a rather strong fondness for. Also, her hair looks funny. Well, it's definitely more Love Live. Bold decision to have almost the entire OP be this CG dance sequence. I'm not saying it's a good decision. As someone who's never been a big fan of Love Live's character designs, I've never found them particularly cute and I think they suffer pretty badly from same face syndrome. This is so, so much worse. Now they all look like weird aliens. The facial proportions seem totally out of whack. The song, at least, is actually one of the better Love Live songs that I've heard, but I also don't exactly spend all that much time listening to Love Live music. I've got my own idol shit, thank you very much. <laughs> My finely honed observational skills tell me that this girl is, in fact, cute. 
That is all. Dude, this OP fucks. This is what you can get when your use of digital effects has thought and time put in rather than just dragging and dropping random shit from the newest plugin pack you bought. Though good luck trying to watch this over streaming and not have your bitrate go to hell. The whole time I couldn't stop thinking of Mob Psycho 100, and that's because the writer and singer here is the same guy behind the OP for season 2. I'd imagine they were well aware of that similarity because it certainly wouldn't surprise me if they took a few notes for its visual presentation as well. They both definitely have their own identities, but the particular elements of their visually distinct style share a lot in common. It's even got that same kaleidoscope effect in it. I'm complimenting it by saying they're similar though because this is packed with cool and creative visuals. His head splitting into a Lego piece, fucking tomatoes coming out of this girl's head, cubes and shit flying everywhere, it's rad as hell. The ED, which I ended up clicking on by accident when looking up the OP, also slaps. I mean, I thought the show looked cool already, but I definitely have to check it out now. Yet another fucking OP! That groove set by the piano and percussion is the best part of the whole song and they have it cut out for the entire chorus, why? Look, my level of interest in Mahoka is about as low as my desire to finish this set. I just don't understand how you can have the piano so explicitly be the leading element in the beginning and end of the song and leave it out for the part of the song that's supposed to be the culmination of all that buildup. It just becomes so musically boring right at the highest point. It's a criminal waste of potential. And I don't like the singing. Hey, Xion, did you hear that I thought the opening theme for the honor student at Magic High School was disappointing? I know, right? Oh, this is kind of cool. Oh no, I'm having a seizure. Oh, hey brother, listen! The goofy English and slow pace kill any chance of me unironically enjoying it, but hey, at least he says carousel funny. The carousel I don't mind this song. Okay, there you go, that's the only compliment you'll ever hear me give Eden Zero, moving on. Okay, the song for this one is great. The singer is good, it's got the choppy staccato piano I've already well established my affection for, a funky vibe with the wah pedal guitar and offbeat emphasis in the percussion. It creates a groove that's just enjoyable to be in and mixes it up enough to have a good sense of variety. I particularly like this part. where it almost feels like it's over, then brings it back with a new color, but not one that feels out of place. I would also recommend checking out the full version, since it's a bit longer and also has its own unique animated music video that is totally different in tone. Honestly, this OP alone made me interested in checking out the show, and I had uh, pretty much no interest whatsoever prior. Silverlink and Isekai don't tend to be the best combination, so I don't think you can fault me for not being especially hype about Make You African American Company. It's not the most visually unique or well-produced, you've got the standard character flashes, title card, action sequence followed by slice of life moments, but it does have some continuity within itself, like them eating this monster they kill, and well, honestly it's just because I think this girl is cute and funny. It communicates a good sense of humor and personality in the individual characters, even if the overall play-by-play -play isn't particularly game-changing. This OP puts me to sleep. I don't love it, I don't hate it, it's like a slice of sandwich bread. I could eat it plain, but usually I like a little something more. The OP lacks anything at all for me to latch onto. Every shot feels so flat, like a collection of big suggestions of emotions it is critically lacking in personality or identity. Yup, that's definitely a slice of bread. Actually, it's not bad. It's pretty good, honestly. This is a bizarre choice considering the visuals. Not that I can't appreciate some contrast, but for most of the OP it feels more like someone just replaced the song with something else. Not that I'm complaining, because I love this song. The low-key jazzy vibes, the slight rasp in the vocalist's delivery, the gradually building emotions, it's fantastic. So much so I looked up the band immediately after and I have to say, Tokyo Jihen, 
He's a great band. I can't believe I haven't heard of them before. I'd particularly recommend listening to the track Igiru from their album Sports. I only found it recently, but considering how many times I've listened to it in that time frame, I'm not gonna hesitate to call it a masterpiece. Not only does Ringoshina deliver an insane performance, but the composition is brilliant, contrasting two colors while maintaining the central musical identity with this great switch up about halfway through. There's a masterful strength to the way everything is conveyed. You can tangibly feel that sense of struggle as it fills the entire soundscape, hitting you with this dense wall of intense emotion that's perfectly balanced in its hectic energy. Oh, you're wondering what that has to do with this particular opening? Nothing. I just really like that song. D-E-F-G-H-I-J-K-L-M-N-O-P-Q-R-S-T-U-V-W-X-Y-Z This opening is about as annoying as children are. Miss Kobayashi's Dragon Maid S. The S is for S tier. The pure level of craftsmanship on display across every second of this OP is like a breath of fresh air. After a while, you start getting used to the mediocrity, so it's always nice to have a reminder of where the peaks really lie. Fauna, who brought us the first season's bop, returned with yet another banger. Her shirt says eat, and I say yes please. The only problem I have with this is this painfully abrupt cut here. <laughs> You can hear the stereo space suddenly change, it just feels off, especially for this kind of music. I was dead certain this was a cut from the full version to make it fit in OP length, but it is in the full version, so now I'm just dead. Dancing in OPs and EDs is just unfair, and it's an unfairness that I am 100% here for. What else should I say? If you've touched Twitter in the last month, then first off, I am so sorry, but also you have almost certainly seen everyone losing their mind over it. Everything visually communicates their distinctive personalities and gives a clear sense for the character dynamics. The animation is overflowing with personality, the music is oozing with charm, and the color design makes my eyes come. It's got disco, dancing, dragons, and fat titties. What is there not to love? So there we go. I talked about every OP, except Tsuki Pro The Animation 2, because I didn't want to. Apologies to all the Tsuki Pro The Animation fans watching. You know what, to make it up to you, I'll give you one minute of silence for every Tsuki Pro The Animation fan watching. This season had some good OPs, it had some bad OPs, and my goodness did it have some bland OPs. So. So many bland OPs. I found a cool band though, so I guess it's kind of worth it. I would make a joke to end the video, but the real joke is I spend hours of my life reviewing anime OPs. Also, special very quick announcement, I'm gonna be at Otakon, it's starting I think the day after this video goes up probably. Feel free to message me on Twitter or in my Discord server if you want to meet up and say hi. Besides that, special thanks to all my patrons, you guys are amazing, thank you so much. And that's all. Bye-bye. I did it, Xi'an. I reviewed the anime OPs. Aren't you proud of me? <sighs> that's what I thought.